Okay, we got some work to do on our test bench here. Um, I've been using the G-Skill AIO cooler on here for ever since we did the review. And to be honest, it's pretty much stayed on here because I've been too lazy to take it off. And I'm not a huge fan or radiator of the way that it sort of looks. And yes, all of this is a test bench and it shouldn't really matter. Um, we're gonna be taking it off today. So you can see the way the bracketry is on here is just kind of, I think, overbuilt and ugly looking. So we're gonna go ahead and take this off today to give us an opportunity to try out something new from Corsair, their H150i Elite LCD. So essentially they took their really popular H series coolers, which we see over here, we also have an H100i and an H170i, which is a 420 millimeter radiator. And they added an LCD screen to the pump. So we're gonna take a look at it, see how it ties in, just kind of do some general installation and first look, I guess, if you will, to see how it cools and how the LCD integrates with IQ to see uh, whether or not it's worth it. Bill Redux creates PCs for gamers who want high frame rates without breaking the bank. Through Bill Redux's website, easily configure your PC and see how it's optimized for PC gaming performance. It is Bill Redux's goal to create the best gaming PC for any budget without cutting corners on the gaming quality and performance. Plus it's backed by a two year parts and labor warranty so you're covered. Pick your budget, pick your games, and get Build Redux. This is our open air test bench too. People ask us all the time why we use open air test bench because that's not indicative of real world experience because people don't tend to use open air test benches. I would challenge that first and say, have you seen the amount of people that are using that o the open air chassis from like Thermal Take that just have a piece of plexi on the front or glass or whatever and it's essentially a wall mount PC? People are using that crap all the time. But you have to understand, when it comes to test benches, the reason why I do it is because of the fact that if you want to test a cooler's capability and you want to remove as many variables as possible, then you have to remove the chassis or at least the enclosed chassis because then what's a limiting factor at that point is going to be the case. And then we're no longer reviewing a cooler, we're reviewing a case at that point. So that's the reason why I do it. We get pushed back every time and to be honest, I really don't care. Second of all, it allows just ease of access when it comes to swapping out different ports and things, or uh, coolers and graphics cards and whatever else it is that we're testing. And it can be a big mess when it comes to cable management because it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be a big jumble of wires that are just ugly because it looks like business. I was tempted right now to actually install 12th gen on here but then I wouldn't be able to show you the video. Not until November anyway. Oops, did I just leak when the embargo lifts? I didn't say a day. This is also gonna be an opportunity for me to fix uh, what I find to be an extremely annoying oversight on this open air test bench from Praxis. This is um, essentially Prima, Prima Chills. We'll find that later. Primo Chills brand. When it comes to changing coolers and stuff, look at this. I can't get it out because there's a bar that goes across. So they've got this giant opening over here, but that was hitting there. That's okay, we have a fix for that. <sighs> now when I put this motherboard back down, I will have access to the bottom to be able to mount down cooler retention plates and stuff. And I had to do that before I could do this, cool, this H150i Elite LCD install because I was getting tired. That's one of the reasons why I stopped changing the coolers on this was simply because of the fact that it was taking me so long because I had to take the mother about, motherboard out every time. And test beds are supposed to make it easier to change out this equipment where a proper case in this instance would have been better than this test bench simply because of the fact that I could access that piece. So now we can get to the cooler. So the packaging is kind of plain, to be honest. Like the other packaging looked really nice and was all yellow and bright. And this is just kind of like basic, but that's fine. So we'll just gently unbox this guy. There we go. Safety and warranty information. So this comes with uh, Commander, well, it looks like Commander Pro. I was kind of hoping it was gonna be a Commander Core. I like the Commander Cores way better than the Commander Pros. But regardless here. Oh, it is basically a small commander core. Okay, cool. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six fans on one side, and then we've got room for six individual Corsair RGB items or compatible items on the other side. I love this because it gets rid of the split. 
between the, co the controller that then controlled LCD hubs and then fan hubs. I much more appreciate that. Um, Two-sided tape, that way you can tape it to something. I feel like Corsair comes out with more fans annually than anyone else. Look at the uh, airflow redirectors right there, which is nice because what this does is it actually smooths out the airflow. To, instead of being a cone, it makes it more straight, which really helps with the static pressure through a radiator. So I'm happy to see that. Obviously these are RGB. I'm not really a fan of the hologram center stickers though. To me, that seems kind of cheesy. I mean, that is just me, but not a fan of hologram anything. That's just, I don't know. Mounting plates for AMD AM4, mounting plates for TR4, mounting plates for Intel. I still don't know if I would recommend this for TR4 though, because the TR4 heat spreader is bigger than the cold plate on any AIO, unless it's one specifically designed for Threadripper. And then we have a USB signal splitter. So that's a USB header for your motherboard that splits into two. So if you had one of those motherboards that only supports one USB 2.0 header, this will at least will split the signal so that you can have more. If we go ahead and unbox the cooler, it's very big, very rounded edge squares. I'm not a fan of this sleeving though. That, because it's loose down here, look. It's like poofy. Yeah, I think that might've been better off just being loose, like just the, the cause that's what it looks like underneath, just the ribbon wire. I think that would have been better looking than this. So far, this feels like a step in the wrong direction, Corsair, in terms of quality and feel. This is the thinnest RPM wire ever, so be careful with that, but that's an, that's an RPM wire so that your system will know that there's a pump or something turning. So you plug this into your CPU fan header, that way your motherboard doesn't give you that error saying error, no CPU detected. And then this, is going to plug into a USB header or the splitter if you need to use the splitter. So fairly pain-free wiring. So I'm using the Intel retention bracket, obviously, because I'm using an Intel motherboard here. The nice thing is this is Intel LGA 1700 ready. Um, it does come with the hardware for that. And basically all that means is that the, we talked about this already, these holes go wider than you would find on other motherboard uh, coolers or CPU coolers that are older prior to the announcement and given the specs of 1700. A lot of these cooler companies were given like dummy sockets to basically say, here is the measurements and here's the, the schematic that you have to clear. And so that at least gave them a head start so that if you have a cooler that is not, uh, has not been around, well, I guess predate 1700, then you could get a retention bracket. Um, we're looking for here, adapter, that would allow you to then be able to mount it. So we're not running 1700, but I'm gonna hang on to these. Normally I just install it and be like, boop, and toss whatever I don't need. Not today, because I gotta make sure that, uh, so there's your Intel 2011, 2066 for like your X series stuff. And then all your 11, 1300, all that stuff right here. Again, I don't personally recommend it for Threadripper, only because the cooler is smaller than the IHS. And the best coolers for Threadripper are gonna cover the entire IHS. The IHS is that big for a reason. It spreads the heat, integrated heat spreader to spread the heat. So if you don't cover the entire thing, you just made the spreader smaller and nobody likes a small spread. So this is a somewhat unique situation here versus what you would probably experience in a case. And that is because we've got this bracket here that it attaches to. Now this bracket technically only supports 240, but if you just use these screws right here to mount it to the bracket on the bottom side, then it overhangs and I could fit a 360 up here. So just worth mentioning that if you see a 240 bracket, that's how we're mounting it. But we pull, because hot air rises, I figured we'll use convection to our favor. So we pull in cool air from the bottom and then exhaust it out the top. So it's going the natural you know, convection, the rise of heat. So I'm gonna go ahead and mount my fans and I'll mount the radiator down first. That way I can mount the cooler uh, block itself. Now you're gonna have some longer screws and you're gonna have some shorter screws. And basically the shorter screws are designed for mounting the radiator directly to a case, or in this game, a frame, a case A frame. And then the longer screws are for passing through the radiator or fan to the radiator. Now are these all the same length? It looks like they are. Sometimes you'll also find 
Some of these are longer by a couple millimeters because then it may need to go through the metal of a frame, then through the fan, then through the radiator. But because none of these holes actually line up with any of the cooling rows, it means there's no danger of having them pierce one of those to cause a leak. So it appears like they just have them, they're all the long ones. That way they'd be long enough to reach through, right, this frame, through the, rad, the fan, and then into the rad. So they're all long, which means you don't have to actually sit there and try and figure out which one it is. That's also what the um, washer is for. This also takes up some of the thickness. That way it doesn't go down too far in the rad. But like I said, you can't actually hurt these radiators because the cooling rows do not line up with the screw holes, which was not always the case, by the way. Some of the early rads, for whatever reason, they had the row line up perfectly underneath the screw holes. So if you use a screw that was too long, you lost the screw and replaced it yourself, you get a nice surprise when you turned on your pump. As I'm tightening down these screws too, it's important to note one of the reasons why you want to make sure you use the washers on this is as you can see, these are rubber standoffs that they're screwing down through. So it gives it a bigger surface area to squish down on. Another thing I really want to point out that I'm disappointed with Corsair is the uh, hot glue, really? These blobs of hot glue to hold the wires down? With the amount this cooler costs, like the fans feel cheap already because of their really plasticky frame. Um, but just to see, I mean, maybe they just ex assumed exhaust. People have this at the top of their case and they won't see it because it'll be between the top of the case and the radiator. But if you were using this in the front, that's what you would see. So, I'm a little disappointed in seeing hot glue blobs on these. Already not boding too well for the uh, quality review part. I'm putting the wires in the holes. Keep it managing. I ain't managing it, I'm just shoving it in there. All right, so I'm gonna use the pre-applied thermal paste on here because obviously if we're gonna worry about the temps, we need to use it in the form that it comes. It looks like based on the box, if the box isn't lying to us, because sometimes the boxes are doctored to make it look a certain way, um, Tubes on the right means this is up, which makes sense because that goes towards the top. So I'm gonna assume that that is what that is. And I'm gonna go ahead and mount it down that way. Ha! But I mean, considering the fact that this thing is, <laughs> well, 290 US dollars, I expect there not to be any hot glue on the fan wires. Okay, so I wanna talk about this right here. I was concerned about how far these brackets because remember, these are designed to fit all the brackets up to 1700. So it's a little longer on one side and it gets really close to this slot. So one thing to keep in mind is the Dom plats are a little bit wider. These are the Dominator Platinums from Corsair. They are a little bit wider. The heat spreader is kind of thick. Um, it's particular to this motherboard and this dim slot, slot layout. It, your results are gonna vary. So I wanted to see if we're gonna be able to clear these tubes because sometimes the tubes will impact. So I just want you to see how close it is. It does fit, it doesn't touch anything, but it's close. I just wanted to point that out. I feel like that's, someone out there has definitely experienced it where they get the cooler in and they go put the RAM in and like, oh no, it won't hit, it won't work because it's hitting that and then you're trying to turn it and everything just looks dumb. So fortunately, these fit. So it's time for the commander part and I'm gonna go ahead and put the double-sided tape on there so I don't lose it, but I'm not gonna take off the backing for the one side because I just wanna be able to have it on here, but because it's a test bench, there's no point in mounting it down to something. I'm literally just gonna let it flop around in there. But one of the reasons that we have that USB 2.0 or 2 splitter is because although this motherboard does have two headers, you can see right there and right there, every now and then we'll use this test bench to review something that uses a 2.0 header. So I'm gonna use the splitter on here because you do need two headers for this, one for the pump and then one for the uh, commander module. So that's why there's two headers on there. Felt like I should point that out. And it's cool though, because if you wanted to do push-pull, the fact that you have six fan slots and six RGB headers available to you means you could do push-pull on this if you wanted. Just gotta put a graphics card in here. Nothing special, I just grabbed a random whatever off the shelf. And now we need to put our RAM in here. You know, it's funny. It looks so much better already on here than it did before, because like I said, the G-Skill one just had so much bracketry happening. Now, if you compare it to before, you can imagine how that would look in your system like that. It's attractive, I like it. It's like understated. All right, so we're about to boot this up and I wanna point out the resolution of this. This is insane. So it takes a second to turn on. You see you got your LED ring that's going. It's got a little boot animation on this. Look at that. 
Look at the resolution on that. That is nuts. That is where the value comes in on this. And that's where I feel like Corsair kind of takes a lead over uh, NZXT. Because NZXT did have a, an LCD cooler first. But I feel like this one kind of took it and is bringing it to the next level in terms of customization and stuff. So obviously it's set to RGB puke at the moment. We haven't set up our lighting yet. So you can see our lights. Our order is red, green, yellow. But it's out of order on here. So the nice thing is, you know, it's out of order! We can just swap it. Boom. There it is. So now that we've identified our fans, I mean, we could run the wizard if we wanted. Um, run authentication. Cool. So what that's going to do right now is it's going to auto detect what is what plugged in. So you don't have to go in and tell it what kind of fan you have. And if you actually pay attention to the list of how many different RGB fans that Corsair has in its portfolio, you would appreciate the auto authentication. That way it can figure out on its own where it, you know, stuff is. So now we can go ahead and change the ring lighting. So this is the current effect that is on there. So if you see that, it's gonna match exactly what's showing over there. And we can individually choose stuff or choose all of them. And then we can start, you know, changing our, our colors and stuff. But for now, see our lighting layers, we'd have to add one here. These are our fans. Hardware lighting are just a different mode. So clearly that's a RGB spiral rainbow, rainbow wave. So all the same stuff you've always seen from Corsair. So nothing really any different here. So screen setup, this is where we can change like, hey, okay, you have coolant temp and you want to have some sort of a visual indication like, hey, we're getting hot. So we've got our low temperatures, which are shades of blue, I'm assuming. So we got blue, purple, blue. Our label color is white, which is the numbers. And then our high temperatures, as you can see, are shades of kind of a gold, an orange, and a red. And we can base it off coolant temp. You can also monitor all these different things. Check this out. Fan one, fan two, temp, core one through seven, load, CPU, which would be like the core uh, CPU like package. I think it's weird how core is split between load and CPU. So it goes five, six, seven, load CPU, eight, nine, 10. That's weird. Um, you know, keep an eye, DRAM frank frequency, DRAM frequency, VCPU, one. Does it just round to a I single I guess. <laughs> It'll always say one then. Pump RPM. Package temperature is currently at 32, 42, 34, 33, 35, 44, 40, 43. So they're not exactly the same, they're pulling at different rates, but it does seem like this is gonna be a package temp. Oh, 34. So core is GPU. <laughs> okay, so now that we've showed you how to set up the colors and stuff for the screen, um, you can actually control your RPM fans and stuff here. So everything is set to balance. I'm just going to go to extreme on all of them because I'm curious how loud these fans are. Pump is also going to be set to balanced. But they still aren't making like any noise. Wow, those are really quiet. So the, the cool thing about this cooler is the resolution of this screen. Um, so you have the default, right, which is just showing the temps and stuff. But you could have an image on there if you wanted. So we'll just add, oh, I don't know. Nothing special, I guess. There we go. Let's throw like a little picture of a 3080 in there. Look at that. Look how gorgeous that is. You just blow it up real big. You just be like, I want my 285 tensor T flops to show. And there it is. It's showing right there. They're there. So they're immortalized. Or we can even add a GIF. Check this out. <laughs> 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 that is awesome. Wait, wait, you're giving me more. <laughs> so you can see just how awesome this would be for like anything. <laughs> so, yeah. Corsair feature request. Can we change gifts for loads so it can go to the blah, blah, blah? <laughs> we'll just make it fiery on its own. <laughs> it's all fiery now. <laughs> Okay, I could waste a lot of time on this. We need to obviously do our Cinebench and we need to keep an eye on some temperatures here. Um, the irony is that I'm not taking my gift down, so I have to <laughs> use hardware monitor to keep an eye on my temps. Right, five gigs right there. We are currently idling at 31 to 34 C on the package. What will it shoot up to immediately? 66, 68, 69. All the cores are sitting in the upper 60s. Not a single core has hit 70 yet. Oh, there it is. One core hit 70 for like a second. Oh, and our package just hit 70. We've got 35C of headroom right now with our overclock. 
Our hottest core has hit 72 so far. And remember, this is the thermal paste it came with. And I have the pump speed currently on balanced and then I have the fans on extreme because they're so quiet. They're only running a little over a thousand RPM. It almost makes me want to change out the fans just as something more, more heavy duty. So 74, 73, yeah, look at that. Low 70s on the course. So the question is, is the LCD screen worth it to you? Because this is not a cheap product. This particular model, the H150i Extreme LCD, uh, is 289 US dollars. That, you can almost build a, a basic custom loop for the price of that. You, you actually can. Um, my issue with that price is these fans. The frame feels cheap. They are ML fans, they are maglev. So they've got a really good bearing in there. It's one reason why they make no sound. It's also why they're performing really well at this weird angle. Um, I was worried about them only being like 1,050 RPM on the extreme setting. I can feel the airflow. It's not super high static pressure, but they are definitely moving air through this radiator. Uh, it was fine, as you saw in the temperatures. Um, over time, it would creep up probably to closer to 75, almost 80 C, because as it takes time for the water to warm up, you'll reach your equilibrium. But the initial spike in temp was what I was curious about, which tells us that the heat is making it to the cooler through the thermal paste and into the rad. So depending on how high that spike's going to be, or not the spike, but the, the equilibrium is going to be, is depend, going to depend on your ambient temperature, what kind of case you're using, and all that sort of stuff. The downside is for that price, I would feel a little upset about the quality of these fans. Sure, the bearing is good. It's an ML ba uh, bearing, maglev bearing. But these hologram stickers, I mean, 1999 called, it wants its hologram style back. The frame feels extremely cheap. I could get past that because it does have rubber standoffs, which would reduce vibration. What I can't get past is the fact that it has those blobs of hot glue holding down the wires. And I have a theory as to what happened there. I have a theory, if you look at the, the wires closely, they go through a channel. But normally when a fan wire goes through a channel built into the cage like that, it has a little piece of, like a little clip that goes over the top to hold them down. Those aren't there. I have a feeling these fans arrived and then QC they went, that's not supposed to be like that. And the fans wires are probably just kind of flopping around, not, not being held down. And I feel like they were, Corsair was sort of given like a, a response by the manufacturer, wherever this is, and, and maybe Shenzhen or Hong Kong, Taiwan, wherever, that basically said, well, we can make them again, but it's gonna take time, months probably, because of how backed up everything is. So their compromise, was to go and put a dab of hot glue on every single one to hold the wires down, making these a first revision fan. I have a feeling in the future, you're not gonna see that hot glue, but these have the hot glue. And if I spent nearly $300 on an AIO and I mounted this to the front of my case as an intake and I had to look at those hot glue dots, I would feel pretty pissed about that. If I had to change the fans to get rid of that, these fans and the ML and the RGB is a part of the cost of the kit. So you're only adding cost and taking something away that you already paid for, which in my, my value brain tells me that's not the right move. So that needs to be fixed and needs to be addressed. Those stickers, god awful stickers need to be taken off and just have some nice matte black ones or something put on there. You have matte black around the LCD, you've got this beautiful RGB lighting, it all looks great and then these hologram stickers are absolutely killing it and not in a good way. So this is where you guys sound off in the comments below. I know we were a few days late to this one, but here nonetheless, I have no idea what your guys' uh, feedback is on this. I've not watched anyone's video or read any comments about any of the, the launch on this. I just do know that a friend of mine was like, hey, Corsair has an LCD screen uh, AIO now. I think I want to get one. And I was like, well, I got some. Let me review it. This is my review, friend. You know who you are. All right, guys, thanks for watching. And as always, sign off in the comments below how you feel about this. And we'll see you in the next one.